Trey Xavier here. Maybe you're broke like I am. Maybe all of your money is tied up in real estate. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to bring you 10 ways that you can improve your guitar tone right now for free. Number one, you might wanna think about raising your action a little bit. Now this might seem kind of counterintuitive because most people like to have their action pretty low, but that just helps you with playability. As far as tone is concerned, it's better if your strings are a little bit higher, that way they can vibrate a little more freely. Whereas if your strings are too low, it's, uh, they can make some fret buzzing, um, that kind of squelchy sound that you get when it's too low and you hit it too hard. The actual vibration of the string is impeded by hitting the fretboard. It might be a little hard to notice when your action is really low, but once you raise it a little bit and you pay attention to the sustain and the resonance of the notes, uh, you'll notice a dramatic improvement. Number two is an easy one, total no-brainer. Uh, using a little piece of foam behind the nut, and if you've got a Floyd Rose, sticking it underneath the springs, cuts out so much ring, you would not even believe it. Tremolo springs and that little section of string between your nut and your tuners are a source of an incredible amount of noise. If you can deaden that sound, your tone is gonna be a great deal cleaner. It's night and day, I swear to God. Even if you have a locking nut, these little bits of string ringing out are still gonna come through your pickups. If you're playing through a very high gain amp and or at very loud volumes, it's gonna be pretty obvious. If you have a two nomadic style bridge, you're gonna to wanna to stick something in between the saddle and the tailpiece. If you sometimes hear little pinging noises when you stop playing, that can either be this little piece of string here or this one. So you're gonna to wanna to silence both of those. Number three, set your pickup height correctly. So as you can see, I've got mine pretty close to the strings there. Now, that's a sound that I like. If you get it too close, you can actually wind up with some weird intonation problems. And if you have it too far away, your pickups are going to sound very weak. So get yourself a screwdriver and uh, an experiment with the height. If your pickups sound a little too brash, you're gonna wanna lower them a tiny bit. If they sound really weak, raise them up a little closer to the strings. A lot of people think that they don't like their pickups when in reality, it's just that the pickup height needs to be adjusted. Number four, set your guitar's intonation correctly. So the way that you do that is you're actually setting the length of the string by moving the saddle back and forth in tiny increments. Whether or not the notes on your guitar sound in tune is gonna be partially based on how long or short the string is based on where the saddle is sitting. So this is kind of a very large topic that I can't really cover in such a short video. There are plenty of resources online that will teach you how to intonate your guitar correctly, and it's not really that hard. Generally, a guitar comes intonated for standard tuning when you get it from the factory. So if you're using something other than standard tuning, you might have to adjust the intonation. If your guitar's intonation is off, there's no amount of tuning or studio trickery that can make it sound good. Number five, pedal order. Here's one I see that is constantly overlooked. The order that your pedals are in makes a huge difference to the sound that comes out of the amp. You might think that you don't like the sound of a pedal that you've got, but if you have it in the wrong place in the chain, you're gonna hate it no matter what it is. This is another pretty vast topic that I'm not gonna cover all of in this video. I'm gonna give you some resources in the description below so that you can check it out yourself. But in general, you want your distortion, overdrive, boost, that kind of thing to come first then a gate, and then like wah, flanger, that kind of thing. And then any sort of time-based effects like reverb, delay, chorus, those should all go in your effects loop if you have one. If not, they just go after all that stuff that I mentioned. You can get cool effects by doing stuff out of the sort of normal order if that's the sound that you're going for. But it's possible that you're being stymied by thinking that it has to go in a certain way and you should experiment with flipping them around and putting them in different places. For instance, sticking a distortion or overdrive before or after your wah pedal has a vastly different sound, and you're gonna wanna be able to hear both of them and then choose which one you like better. Number six, wipe down your strings after every time you play. It might not seem like it'll have an immediate effect on your tone, but it's more like it keeps it from degrading slowly over time. It's not as good as changing your strings all the time, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. 
Number seven, learn how to dial in your amp for the sound that you like. One very important thing to keep in mind is that the tone that you like when you're playing by yourself probably will not translate well to either a live band or a full recorded mix situation. As a general rule, what I want you to consider when you're dialing your tone is not just yourself, not whether or not the guitar sounds good by itself, but is it taking into account the bass, the drums, the singer, the keyboards, that kind of thing. You want it to sit somewhere in the mix and have its own little home uh, so that people can hear you, um, but they can also hear everything else. Obviously, it's gonna be really different for different styles. For instance, good grindcore tone is not the same as good jazz tone. So you're gonna have to use your own judgment, but as long as you're considering the band as a whole and the style as a whole, uh, you'll probably be all right. Number eight, clean your fretboard. If your guitar fretboard is really grimy and built up with crap from your fingers for a long time, it's gonna have an impact on your tone. It might not be huge, but it's probably mellowing out a lot of the sort of high sounds. I mean, if you have a maple fretboard and it's covered in gunk, it's not gonna be as bright as the day you got it from the factory. So it's not just something that's gross to look at. You might wanna also consider that it could be impeding your tone. Number nine, learning correct palm muting technique. Not to be confused with the kind of palm muting that you do when you're playing chuggy chords and stuff. Um, palm muting the strings that you're not using as you go up and down the strings is imperative in making your guitar sound, sound good. A lot of times I've seen some really good or even great players who uh, don't really take this into account as much as they should and some of the stuff that they play is lost because the lower strings or some random open string is ringing out through what they're playing so it's not as clean as it could be. So when you're playing something you want to pay attention to what the strings that you're not playing are doing as well. So what you do is you use this part of your picking hand to mute the strings that your left hand isn't playing. You sort of follow back and forth like this. Anytime your left hand goes up, your right hand goes up too. And that keeps everything you play nice and clean. Number 10, practice. Quit dicking around with your nice shiny toys, the amp, the settings, the controls, what kind of cables to use, what kind of picks. Screw all that. Practice your ass off and everything you play will sound nice, no matter what the hell kind of rig you're playing through, what kind of cheap ass guitar you've got, you know, a cable you pulled out of the garbage. If you play really well, none of this shit matters. The goal is to make it so that nobody notices what kind of amp you're using, what kind of gear you've got, if you're, what kind of guitar you're playing, any of that stuff. They just listen to you play. And if you suck, there is no piece of gear on planet Earth that is going to make you sound good. So you might as well spend most of your time worrying about what you're playing and how you're playing it.